This is Movie Turn. Leslie Mitchell reporting. The latest newsreel pictures from Athens, mostly taken under difficult and dangerous conditions by Norman Fisher of Movie Tone, underline the tragedy of a liberated capital still at war. That British troops should be involved in the Greek Civil War is to us in Britain the most bitter part of the tragedy. But unless the forces of Elas were to lay down their arms, British troops had to continue with their work of clearing Athens itself and the province of Attica. In the capital, Elas snipers might be anywhere. They might be in mufti or almost any kind of uniform, including British battle dress. The job of clearing them up was not a pleasant one. When a definite Elas firing point was pinned down, such as a nest of machine guns, our men dealt severely with it. The job that fell to the paratroops round about Christmas time was the clearing up of the gasworks area. General Scobie, the British commander, was untiring in his efforts to reach a settlement. Here he is walking through the streets from his headquarters. General Plastiras, once the strong man of Greece and a hero of the Balkan War, had been summoned to Athens. It was hoped that his wide influence might help in effecting a settlement. He came at the urgent request of Prime Minister, Mr. Papandreou, who has since resigned together with his entire cabinet. While the situation was going from bad to worse, Field Marshal Sir Harold Alexander arrived in the Greek capital to review the state of affairs in person. But the problem of Greece still appeared to be insoluble, except by methods of force and the life of the people in Athens continued to be extremely precarious, what with the fighting and the lack of food and other supplies. The fighting went on, and the conferences went on. Here the French ambassador is seen arriving to confer with British authorities. He's followed by the head of the Soviet mission, Colonel Popov. Driving to the meeting place in an armoured vehicle, Britain's Prime Minister is seen arriving after his dramatic, but we all hoped, decisive journey. Consultations with all the authorities concerned followed immediately after his arrival. Fisher obtained shots of Mr. Reedon with the field marshal, Mr. Harold Macmillan and others during brief intervals between their urgent discussions. In a statement issued from Athens, Mr. Churchill said that it was clear to him there would have been a massacre in the city if Britain had not intervened. The sooner the other side sees reason, the sooner the fighting will stop, he said, adding that we had enough troops there and on the way to obtain mastery over Athens and Attica. A prominent figure throughout has been Archbishop Damaskinos. His impartiality, as well as his many high qualities, singled him out as the one man who might act as regent. Acceptable to all parties, his strength of character, his personality and his record might go far to obtain order out of chaos. And since these pictures were taken, he has been made regent. The officer with him here is Major McCaskey, a close friend of his and a man who had done much valuable work on special missions to Greece during the German occupation. The Archbishop was himself a centre of resistance against the Huns. At one time, when they were shooting hostages, he offered himself as a hostage in their place. Throughout the conferences, the Battle of Athens went on. From a rooftop, Mr. Eden and the Field Marshal had a good view of the forces in action not far off. On another occasion, it's reported that a sniper's bullet came unpleasantly close to the Premier. Nor was sniper's bullets the only danger in which the Greek Civil War had involved the British leaders. On the day after Mr. Churchill's arrival, nearly a ton of high explosive was discovered in a sewer underneath the Athens Hotel housing the Greek government. British sappers removed it from a manhole in front of the hotel, wooden boxes full of dynamite and sacks of dynamite demolition slabs. All the stuff was of German origin and had apparently been placed in position during the night by Greek rebels. Such were the conditions in Athens. Dynamite in the sewers, fighting in the streets. Such were the conditions in which this attempt to end the bloodshed was being made. Whatever the eventual results of the meetings, fighting went on then and has gone on since. The Acropolis was held by our men, 
a vantage point from which they could observe and control Elas' movements in many parts of the city. But it was under fire from Monument Hill, held by Elas, and British paratroops were very much on the alert as they took up their positions near the Parthenon. Britain had not come to occupy Greece, nor to fight Greeks. We went there to help Greece consolidate her liberation, to feed her, and to help her to resume her place among the United Nations. But Britain could never permit that hard-won freedom to be blotted out in a chaos of fratricidal massacre. Therefore, so long as discussion failed, force prevailed. Part of that force was brought to bear by the RAF, which dived on Elas' strong points in and around Athens and shut them up. Flying dangerously low over the capital, our pilots have been carrying out their distasteful but essential tasks with the most painstaking accuracy. If Elas would not disarm and withdraw, Britain must continue with the tragic Battle of Athens. 